Hi everybody, this is video three of my three-part series um, on how to make a pattern from an existing garment, how to pin down and cut out that pattern from an existing deconstructed shirt, and then how to sew everything up. This video is how to sew everything up. I need your help with something. Um, I feel like my recording has changed and you are all asking for more close-up shots and I think I kind of overshot on this one because I feel like as I was editing it felt like everything was close up and you didn't get a really broad view of what piece I was working on so if you guys can take note of that while you're watching the video and leave a comment let me know what you needed more out of this video um, more uh, overview shots um, if you, there's something else you can think of that you need out of this, let me know so that I can adjust my recording style because if it's not for you guys, then there's no point in doing it. So let's get started. One of the mistakes I made when doing the pattern is I didn't mark the centers of the pieces. Now I put little snips here so I'll know where to fold and I put them also at the bottom. And then I went through and the center back, there's a snip there. And then the collar stain, or I'm sorry, the yoke has to go onto here. So I, I mark this center and then I mark this center because my collar stand will go here. Then I mark the top of the collar stand because that's where the collar will go. I don't need to mark the cuffs because um, that is as wide as I need them to be. And then um, I will mark the sleeve and then when I put the um the back to the front or the i'm sorry the yoke shoulder to the front shoulder i'll find out where the center is there mark that on my pattern piece for next time okay to start sewing um, i am going to sew the straight part of the yoke to the shirt back the part that i placed on a fold So um, after I made all my little notches in my pattern pieces, I can easily just um, match things up and start sewing. And don't forget what seam allowance you were using um, on your pattern pieces. Sorry, it's hard to talk and work at the same time. If you find a pattern piece, now the yoke and the shirt back don't match up exactly. It's, I don't even know if it's enough to um, correct. So the shirt back is just a little, I mean, slightly wider than the yoke. So you could either trim it off, but what I'm doing, because I want to see if it'll work, is put the shirt side down on the feed dogs because the feed dogs actually will help you ease those things in. You know what, I'm going to change the needle, see if that helps. So you can see a little ease going on there. 
but nothing that is going to it's not even enough to pucker underneath so that'll probably press out I'm going to change my needle and serge this okay I should have done this before but you know how sometimes you think oh I'll remember that or oh I can do that and then you when it's time to remember something <laughs> and you realize oh yeah I can't remember anything this is one of those times this is what I do it's like oh yeah I'll just mark the top and bottom and th that should be good but I can see myself now getting frustrated and having to pull out um, my ruler to make sure everything's exactly the way it should be and I'm just going to jump ahead of that and not make that mistake so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my tracing paper with the the marking side the part that's going to mark your garment on the outside I'm gonna place it between the fabrics the right sides I'm going to lay this back over and I'm going to use my tracing wheel if you guys like my tracing wheel I have a product review uh, video of this and I will leave a link in the description box if you guys want to go check it out I love this tracing wheel so that will be my second fold this will be my first fold and I'm doing it on the outside so that when I fold it in I will be able to see the marks so let me see if this one works right yes so it's not like a ton of the tracing paper on there but it does give me a guide to where I'm going to fold it okay I took it to the ironing board and I pressed it you can see it's not exactly on the line because I didn't mark the line exactly straight because I didn't have a ruler but oh right here this is why I don't wear this shirt everything sticks to it anyway um, I fold this under because I'm prepping each piece before I make the shirt I figured it would be easier to prep each piece before I assemble the shirt and unfortunately I don't have interfacing to put in this area but like I said this is a tester it will go to my grandson if it fits him and he'll probably outgrow it next week so now I'm just going to um, stitch this down on both fronts then I'm going to sew the front pieces to the yoke sh uh, sew sewing at the shoulder Okay, I pinned the shirt front to the yokes, the yoke at the shoulder, and I'm going to sew those on. Don't forget to backstitch. Okay, I'm going to press this and serge the edges. Okay, I have the shoulders sewn together and you can see one of my mistakes is I forgot to test the pattern pieces to make sure the corresponding areas match up. 
and so this was just a little off so I decided to make sure it matched the neckline rather than the armhole so I'm just going to take my rotary cutter and trim this off but not trim past here I'll do that on both sides and clean up those threads. Okay, I'm gonna do it to the other side and we'll just keep going. Before we go any further into assembling this shirt, I am going to um, stay stitch the neckline so that when I put the collar stand and the collar on that this doesn't get stretched out. When doing the stay stitching like this, they recommend that you start at the center back and come around to the front and then start at the center back and go around to the front on the other side. I'm not sure why they recommend that. I'm just going to do it. Now that I finished the stay stitching, I am going to work on the collar and collar stand. I'm going to assemble all of that. So this side has the interfacing. So the interfacing would go towards the inside of the jacket. So I'm just going to mark this so that I know. Okay, then we're going to trim around here, we're going to trim off this and then do some clips here and just trim it down to like a quarter of an inch. Okay, I trimmed it down and I'm just going to make some clips here. Okay, and now we're going to turn it right side out. And this is a point turner that you can use to 
get in there and get that point out without um, piercing through your fabric. Okay, I'm going to go to the ironing board and press this out. And unfortunately that's going to go away, but I think you can tell which ones interface because you can see through the fabric on the bottom, but not the top. So that's what we're doing. I have it pressed out. Guys, I'm really sorry. It's so, it's so hard to sew or to record black fabric. So I've got it pressed out. Now I'm going to go in and you can tell what side has interfacing. This side has interfacing, this does not. So I'm going to do some under stitching. I'm taking that seam allowance, I'm gonna press it over to the unlined side and I'm going to stitch as close as I can to that stitching line. And that's just so that the collar um, won't roll back on itself and you can see the underside even though it's black and you're not going to because they're the same color it's just a nice practice to do to make everything look nice and polished now i'm not going to be able to get all the way to the corner and that's okay it is really hard to see what i'm doing Now I'm going to like work my hands like this and lay it flat so there's no folds underneath. Even though I can't really see the stitching, I can tell I went off. It's going to be kind of crooked. But it will be on the underside and no one will see it. Okay, maybe not quite as bad as I had feared. Can you see that? Maybe at an angle. You can see where it went off a little bit right here. <laughs> trying to look through the camera and I, I'm not doing right here. Okay. I've never seen anybody else do this, but I'm going to because I like to try and minimize any problems or mistakes. So now that my collar is sewn and pressed and understitched, I'm going to sew just right along the edge just to keep my fabrics together, my raw edges together so that when I sew them into the collar stand that I'm not gonna have any problems. done okay now we need to put the collar on the collar stand and you can see right there my little center mark I'm gonna align it with the center mark on my collar right sides together now normally the lining the collar stand piece that has the, the interfacing would 
go on the part of the collar that doesn't have a lining. But since both pieces of the collar stand have a lining, then it doesn't matter. But we do need to make sure that right sides are facing the collar. So you're sandwiching the collar between the collar stand pieces. Now you need to make sure that that mark right there goes to the edge of your collar. And it lines up with that one. And then the same over here. Now, this looks like there's a, a little bit of movement in here, or a little bit of a bubbling on the inside, like the inside fabric is needs to be adjusted. That's better. Now I have to reach in and make sure that the collar the edge of the the raw edge of the collar aligns correctly with the raw edge of the collar stand. Now, um, because I'm not working off of a pattern with instructions, um, I looked up some videos on how people do the collar stands. Now, believe it or not. Um, just because you you sew and you've sewn for years doesn't always mean that the order of assembly is just comes to you automatically especially if you're come up coming up with your own design um, you still have to consider how to put everything together a designer is different than a seamstress or a sewist and so it's been a while since I've really had to think about how to assemble this. So one person said, attach the collar stand to the inside of the garment. And when you flip it out, then you tuck under and sew the outside. So the outside always looks really good. And if you happen to go off on the inside, it's not that big of a deal because no one sees it. Either way, no one sees it because it's either under a collar or it's inside the jacket. So, um, but what I do is I need to decide, I believe my seam allowance is three eighths of an inch, but this is what I do. I will sew, I'll have to decide which side of this is going to be on the inside or outside of the jacket, whichever one gets sewn last. And I sew a seam or a stitching line three eighths inch, three eighths of an inch in from this raw edge so that when I go to put it in, I sew this side with the sewing machine and then I fold on that stitching line here so that I make sure it's straight. So now I just have to make sure I know which one is going to be on the inside of the jacket or outside the jacket. I hope that makes sense because it's a lot of this and that and <laughs> in and out. Okay, so this is the lined part. So this is going to be on the outside of the jacket like this. So this is going to get sewn to the jacket on the outside. This is the inside. This is what, what will be um, seen when you open your jacket and you look inside. So this is, I'm going to sew it on this side because I'm going to do it like the first lady said. And then um, I'm going to do it like her. I don't remember her name, but I think her channel is so, so live. So, but I'll link it in the, in the description box so you guys can watch her. Okay, so I'm just sewing my guide. 
This is not necessary. If you want to do it, you can. This is just my way. Okay, so that's my guide to know how much I'm going to um, fold it over when it's time. Now, both people that I watched said you're supposed to start from the center back and go this side, center back, go that side. But I didn't do that because I forgot. And this is how I usually do it. Okay, I'm going to trim this down, go to the ironing board and press it out. Okay, um, I pressed it down. This is what it looks like. And I'm, it's really hard to see in the camera. So I'm trying to align this to see how it matches up. And it's pretty good. So now I, now I, just I, I remembered that this right here is the underside of the collar so it's going to go like this that's what the collar is going to look like and then so you can see the under stitching there and this is my guide to folding later so I've got it put together correctly now I just need to pin it onto the shirt okay now what I'm going to do is align that notch with the center back notch on the yoke and then I'm going to align this right here and this is the part that scares me the most because I'm afraid I messed up but we'll see I'm going to align that fold with that seam right there and Let's hope it works. And I'm not really worried about the collar stand being too big. I'm worried about it going the other way because um, I don't want to have to take up the shoulders and then I'm really fudging things in. I'm just feeling on the underside to make sure that when this is aligned at the raw edge, look back to make sure there's no folded fabric back here that I would have to remove and restitch.
Okay, and right here, I'm going to have to kind of lay this back to make sure I'm not going to have any folds under here. some folds underneath it. I'm going to have to go back and check it. Looks like there's a little part right there I might have to fix. And it's better to do it now than to wait. This is the inside of the shirt. So now I'm going to go press this up and then I will press this down on the stitching line or maybe not. We'll see. Okay, so this is the, um, the part where the lady was saying to fold this under and if I don't have a guide I cannot get it right. It'll just stress me out. And it doesn't have to fold right exactly on the line. I just needed a guide to follow. Um, so I'm not stretching it and I'm not really pulling it. So you see the fold, or I'm sorry, you see the notch here, or I do. I don't know if you guys can see it. And I'm aligning it with the notch um, on the... Um, yoke and I'm going to pin it right there. I'm going to come over here and fold this under. Now the line that it's folding that I'm folding under the line that I'm folding under two is the same width from the raw edge as the seam allowance. I have to get my really thin pins for these. And then I'm going to do this side, folding it on that line.
Sorry about the camera, guys. I'm doing so much work on my house that I don't have time to work on my table to make sure I have a steady camera. But that is in my plans. If um, my son and daughter-in-law will allow it, I will hopefully get pictures of my grandson in the white shirt that is too small, and then this one, which should fit him better. But you know, nowadays we have to be really careful with kids on the internet and things we let being shown. Okay, so that's what it looks like pinned. And that's where the stitching line should be. Oh my gosh, I am not hoping, I'm not expecting a whole lot here. Uh, should I do it, should I do it? If I see how off it is from the seam on the inside, it's gonna stress me out. But no one's perfect, right? We're not going for perfection. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> it's so hard to see the, the black fabric and I forget that it's not in camera in the view. All right, let me see how it looks like on the inside. Okay, I think I'm ready to do it. And we are going to take this nice and slow. Now, this what I this part I do remember. She was saying start at the center back. And the reason why is because when you get around to the front here, you don't want any knots or weird stuff going on. So we're going to start here, come all the way down, go up around here, around the other side, and come back here again. So... Yes, I've been sewing for over 30 years, but you know, you can always learn from somebody else. So here we go. Obviously this is not my strong area here, getting around these tight curves.
Okay, I had an issue here. That knot under here did not want to go through, so I'll have to come back and redo this. Okay, you guys, I did one sleeve um, off camera by myself um, because I don't like to do the gather stitches or what do you call it, the ease stitching. Um, but I'm going to do it for you guys. I didn't do it, and this is how it turned out. So there's no puckering, but there you can really tell where I'm easing it in. But for this one, I will do the ease stitching. I think that's what it's called. A basting stitch, and you ease it in. You know it, you know what I'm talking about. So one of the mistakes I made, and I tried to correct it, and I couldn't because it was such a small amount, is this. I could not fix it. I took it out, and I tried to fix it, and I couldn't. So I'm just leaving it. Um, instead of taking the whole thing out, one person that I watched the video, they said, just go ahead and stitch it up like this. And I tried it. didn't work. So there it is. I'm not going to stress over it. He's six. And... Um, this is just a test anyway. So I'm going to um, ease stitch this now and excuse me if I don't remember what the name of the stitching is. Is it basting for ease? It's not a gather. But anyway, I'm doing a 3 eighths of an inch um, seam allowance. That's where I'm going to I'm going to do it because that's what fit in really well. So I'm just going to go from here all around to here did that sound right? All the way around to here. And then I'll pin it on at the, at the top and then the ends. And then I'll just ease everything else in. Okay, I forgot to tell you that when you do your stitching, uh, put it on the longest um, stitch length so that you can easily get it, the thread out when you're kind of easing it in. And also on the wrong side of the fabric, that needs to be down so that when you pin your fabrics together, your bobbin thread should be facing you because in my experience, it's easier to pull the bobbin thread out than it is to pull the needle thread out. Um, just like I said, my experience. So I'm going to match up this chalk mark to the shoulder, not the seam, but with the top of the shoulder. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to align it here so the end of the sleeve cap align it with the side seam of your shirt around the armhole and do it with the other side as well now what I do is I pin here and then I pin where I made my notch just because I don't want this, this area shifting. So this is going to stay here. Everything else in here gets eased in. Okay. 
Now the tails here are from, these thread tails are from the bobbin and it just seems to me to work a little better um, in pulling them. So see how much I've pulled in already and I don't need that much. It's just an ease, it's not going to be a gather. And I do the best I can to, when I align it like this, I want to pin towards the center, the midpoint between these two pins. So I'll hold it like this. Pull that shirt up. Looks like I'm going to need to adjust it this way a little bit. So midpoint, now I'm going to do the midpoint between these two pins. Then the midpoint between these two pins. And in the mean, or at the same time, I'm feeling in the back to make sure there's not going to be any folds when I pin it. And then another midpoint. I use a lot of pins when I when I do these um, ease stitching. Because I want to get it as even as possible. Now here, I'm going to find the midpoint here. Okay, so it's in. Now um, we just have to sew it. Now because the sleeve cap is the fuller part, I'm going to put that on the bottom because I want the feed dogs to do their job. And I'll just stitch from the top. And then in, while stitching, I'll use my fingers to keep an eye on what's going on at the bottom, making sure nothing um, gets folded under. And hopefully that'll work. I need, uh, when you do this, make sure you take your stitch length back to 2.5.
Let's see how that looks. Looks like it might be a problem, but I'll have to flip it over and find out. Okay, everything looks good on that side. Now I'll just take out my basting stitches and um, press it out. Okay, so when I was telling you about this right here, it makes me feel, feel much better knowing that um, a boy's shirt is left over right. So it's not going to be seen anyway. And my grandson wears, he almost never goes without wearing either a necktie or a bow tie. So either way, that is not going to be seen. And I kind of like the way that collar looks. While I was at the ironing board, I went ahead and I folded up the first part of my hem. So now I'm just going to fold it up one more time and sew it all the way around. We're almost done, you guys. Now, I think I've talked to you guys about this in, in other videos. When you're doing a narrow hem like this, especially around these curves, you need to go so short distances and readjust this, short distance and readjust this so that you're not running off like this and then having to fold it and then you've got some kind of like wonky little crease there. So we're gonna go slow and readjust as we go. And at the deepest curves, I kind of pull it out a little bit so that it doesn't buckle underneath the needle. So you're keeping that nice, smooth curve. So this is what I want this to look like. So I'm just gonna kind of hold it in place until I get to this side seam. Now at the side seam, it's not going to be quite as wide as it is when you get around the, the lower curves. So don't worry about that. There's a lot of threads down there. I'm hoping to hide them inside.
Okay, I'm going to go down to the end and hold this in place. I'm going to hold it with my left hand and I'm going to try and um, adjust everything with my left. I'm hold it with my left, adjust everything with my right. iron and I'm going to um, press it all out okay um, now we are going to work on the cuffs um, and I had mentioned before that the entire cuff is already interfaced so I don't have to decide which side is the right side I'll just do one so we're not taking too much time on camera. I'll do the other one off camera. I'm going to trim this down, uh, clip the corners or clip the, the curves and press it and I'll be right back. So after I stitch it all the way around, I'm going to take it to the ironing board, fold it under on that seam on that stitching line and then put it on the same way I would if I was doing an alteration and that is just sandwich the shirt uh, the end of the shirt in the cuff and stitch it all the way around and I forgot to turn my camera on so that's why you're catching me while I'm after I've already started it So there's my stitching line. I'm going to take it to the ironing board, press it under, and I'll come back. Okay. Um, I pressed everything down. This is what it looks like. And now we are going to just sandwich this in here and then sew it down. So, but before we do that, I'm going to make my marks on here so that I know how much of my shirt needs to go into the cuff. And we're doing three eighths. And 
I think I messed that up. Okay, let's hope I can figure out which line that one is supposed to be. This is the right sleeve, so we're going to start here. I'm trying to tuck that all the way into that the end of the cuff. Help it hold it in place while I kind of get everything else situated. I'm just going to clean up the threads and then go and press everything out. I might have to take this top stitching out because it looks really, really bad. So anyway, the cuff is on and now I have buttonholes and buttons to do and take out that top stitching. Okay, we're getting down to the wire here. Um, now I was playing around with whether I should use black buttons or white buttons. And I really liked the black buttons. They were small, shiny, the four hole. And then I had these, but these seemed too big. It didn't fit. And so I consulted with my grandson's mom, my daughter-in-law, and she actually wanted white. Um, I would have put on the little black buttons, but she likes the white because that's what they put on in stores. 
um, you know, this has always been a weakness of mine. Do I do this or do I do that? And since I am not the one wearing the shirt, um, she is calling this. To me, my personal opinion, I think white kind of takes away from the look I was trying to accomplish with the shirt, but um, she knows him better than I do and what he would like. So we're doing the white. So what I'm doing is I'm marking the center of my placket. Um, I measured one of his shirts to see how far apart they need to be. So from this one here down to here is two and a half inches. And from here to each other one is three and one quarter inch between each button. So I measured to the top of each buttonhole. So from here, it'll be three, or three and a quarter. It seems like so much space. And then just to make sure I get it right, I'll just move it down. And then this one will be the last one. Okay. Now when I put my use my buttonhole maker on my machine, I'll start there and it'll go down, start here, go down, start here, go down, like that. And then I'll do the sleeves. Okay, I have my buttonhole foot on. I've got my lever down and my button is placed in the back. So now I have to just select the buttonhole that I want and let the machine do the job. Now I will do, I'll do this one on camera, then I'll just turn it off and do the other ones um, without. So I made the mark. So I'm gonna have to look through here and make sure my chalk line aligns with that red line. And then my cross line here aligns with the green. So I'll go from the side to make sure it's lined up there. And then here, make sure that my placket is straight. And that looks good. 